Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. We already looked at the basics of the Deepin desktop. Now it's time to take a look at the Deepin default applications. Let's start. Deepin File Manager. It is a custom, simple and efficient application. It uses the traditional file manager layout with a places bar on the left and the current folder's content on the right. It does handle two view modes, icons and list, but does not offer a column view unfortunately. It supports tabs and has baked-in search, which works fine and can be activated just by typing any file or folder's name in the address bar. You can also add color labels, named tags here, to any file or folder and find them automatically in the places bar, which is a nice touch. It does have a few options, such as enabling the dark mode, as most Deepin apps do, as well as setting the files or folders to open with single or double click, customizing the default directory on any new window, displaying file previews or not, or auto-mounting drives. Deep in File Manager also has some kind of quick view feature, letting you preview images, videos, PDFs and some other text files, simply by pressing the spacebar when selecting a file or folder. Deep in File Manager is simple, but handles all the basic features a file manager should have. It looks good and works fast. Deep in Calendar Deepin Calendar is on the simple side of applications, as far as calendar apps go. It's actually more of a widget than a full-fledged calendar. It only shows you the different days in a month view, and does not allow for meeting creation or any other interaction. It's extremely basic, and while it looks good, it does not handle any kind of necessary features in such an application. Users in need of a calendar app should probably look elsewhere. Deepin Image Viewer Pretty basic as well, this is no photo manager, but simply a way to show a given image. It only lets you rotate the picture you're looking at or delete it. It also doesn't fit the image to the size of the window by default, which forces you to click at least once before viewing a photo comfortably. You can also display an image's info through the right-click menu. As its name suggests, this is simply an image viewer, but the lack of small tools to quickly crop or rename a file means that it will only be useful for the most basic of needs. Deepin Music A basic music player, Deepin Music allows you to play your tracks, favorite them, loop or shuffle the playing list, and create playlists. There is no artist or album view, and filters are scarce, not offering genres, for example. It does support lyrics and search, but that's about it. You also get the dark theme option, as well as choosing whether to leave the app in the tray instead of closing it when you close its window. For playing a casual tune, it's handy, but I don't think I'd want to use it to organize my music library into playlists. Deepin Movie The default video player for Deepin is deceptively simple. It allows you to play a file, a CD, DVD, or queue all video contents of a folder. You can maximize the window, and it allows you to automatically pause a video when you minimize the player, which is very useful, as well as to remember the last playback position to pick up where you left off. Deepin Movie also allows you to load subtitles and select the aspect ratio of the window. It has a surprising amount of shortcuts for quicker access to a lot of playback features. Deepin Movie might look simple on the outside, but it packs a lot of features for such a small video player. Deepin Terminal This is the default terminal emulator on Deepin. It does, as most Deepin apps, look very pretty, using transparency and even blur if you turn it on in the settings. It handles tabs and themes, with a healthy selection offered by default. Deepin Terminal also allows you to add remote servers to manage distant machines and save them for later access. You can also set up custom commands, with aliases to execute complete commands with a handy shortcut, for example typing update to execute sudo apt update. But that's not all. You can play with opacity, font and font size, changing the keyboard shortcuts for a lot of actions, changing the cursor type, the scroll mode or add blur to the background. Deepin also has a Quake mode, which lets you invoke a terminal window with Alt plus F2, which slides out from the top edge of the screen. You can close it through a right-click, or automatically after its focus is lost, if you enable that option in the settings. Deepin Terminal looks very basic, but hides a ton of very useful features. Deepin Editor This is Deepin's default text editor. It handles tabs, syntax highlighting, and allows you to change themes for those who like to look at their text files on a colored or dark background. In the settings, you can change the shortcuts, the font style and size, as well as how many spaces a tabulation will add. 
It's too light for heavy duty coding, but for people who only need to make quick edits to a file or two, it doesn't serve well. Deepend System Monitor This is the default system monitor and it looks extremely pretty. It shows your RAM and CPU consumption at all times, as well as the network and your running applications. You can switch to see all running processes for the current users or all running processes on the machine and surf through all these tasks. It allows you to quickly end a running process, pause it or go to its running location. It does have a compact mode which does not seem more compact than the default one and can also be switched to dark mode. For a system monitor, it's perfectly fine. Less powerful than KDE's one with its customizable tabs, but perfectly suitable for day-to-day -day use. Deepin Store The Deepin Store is the application manager for Deepin. It has a very well thought out layout with app categories on the left and a showcase of applications on the right. Deepin uses its own repositories, which are not always up to date. It allows you to switch regions from China to international, which seems to filter out Chinese specific app options and change the app highlights. It lets you add reviews after signing in, which is a weird thing to ask for, and shows you the application sizes, number of downloads and ratings. The store also allows you to donate to each app with a surprising random button for randomizing the amount to donate for some reason. It also allows you to ask for an update of a specific app through a dedicated button, which will let the distro's packagers know that a certain number of users would like a specific app to be updated. I'd like it better if all applications were kept more up-to-date and didn't require user input, but that's what Flatpaks are for. On this note, the Deepin store supports Flatpaks, even adding a Flatpak word after each app that comes from this repository, but it seems to be mostly using its own remote repo. The store itself cannot open Flatpak ref files, though. The Deepin store is a nice example of how to present regular old packages with a very nice, very well thought out interface. Deepin Utilities Deepin also ships with a lot of utilities. It has its own screenshot tool, which lets you select a portion of the screen and even annotate on the fly with shapes, arrows, text, and color and font size selection. You can choose to autosave the screenshot or save it someplace else, and it can even handle the quality. It's the proof you can pack a ton of features in a very simple UI. Deepin Screen Recorder lets you record your screen, but it doesn't seem to work for me. It can record GIFs on MP4 and any portion of your screen, which is handy, but on my computer it produces unreadable files, even on VLC. You also get a complete manual for all default Deepin applications and the desktop, as well as a simple calculator, a voice recorder which looks awesome, as well as a Debian package installer called Deepin Package Manager, even though it can't search for any specific package. It also ships with a font installer and a graphics driver manager, which allows you to use a specific driver for your video card. On my system, it offers the default Intel driver, the open source NVIDIA driver, or even to use Bumblebee, which is an open source implementation of NVIDIA's Optimus, and the NVIDIA Prime solution, both of which install the proprietary NVIDIA graphics drivers. This utility is a very nice way to handle graphics drivers, and I wish other distros would take notes. Deepin, as a distro, also ships the WPS Office Suite, which offers a word processor, a spreadsheet, and a presentation editor. These are not open source, but handle Office documents very well, even though they do not support the open document formats, which is a shame. All in all, Deepin applications all look very good, with clean, simple interfaces, which often hide powerful features. Some are not up to par, such as the calendar, and some seem broken, such as the screen recorder, and it lacks a good photo library manager. But I must say, for independently developed applications, they are impressive, on par with the offerings you could find on Elementary, and often surpassing the GNOME software suite. I hope you guys enjoy this little tour of default Deepin applications. I'll keep exploring the Deepin desktop environment in more videos, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching, and goodbye! Did you enjoy this video's soundtrack? You can get it, and other tracks like it, from Ritual Music. This awesome website is designed for video creators and professionals to let you find and add the best soundtrack to your video creations. You can browse tracks by curated playlists or simply look through all the genres, moods, attributes, instruments and uses to find the right tune for your project. Sign up for a free account at ritualmusic.com and get your first track free of charge from the Welcome to Ritual playlist with the promo code Welcome to Ritual. Click on the link in the description below to start adding the right soundtrack to your video creations. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. 
You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.